What is up guys, it's Grand Gaming Guild and I'm back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Last time we attempted to beat Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team without using any attacking moves and it was a lot of fun. So moving on to some of the mainstream games again. We're gonna attempt to beat Pokemon Fire Red using only Meowth. However, this one will be a little bit different than all the other Pokemon challenges you've been seeing. Stick around to find out how. Meowth stats aren't that great, with its only decent stat being its speed. Everything else is pretty bad, being between 35 and 45. Its moveset also leaves it a lot to be desired. It has mostly normal Normal type moves as to be expected but the only other moves it learns that aren't normal is bite and faint attack which we will probably have to end up using thankfully meowth can learn many tms so if we ever need to use a specific move for a battle we can just go ahead and teach it to him the rules for this challenge are pretty simple rule number one we can't use any other pokemon in battle besides meowth we can however use other pokemon for hms rule number two no using items in battle but held items are allowed rule number three no game breaking cheats or exploits one more thing before we start i recently tweeted that i'll hit 1000 subscribers by the end of the year unless you want me to look like a big fat liar please like and subscribe to help support the channel and help me sleep at night with that out of the way, we can begin the challenge. I decided to name myself John A after the famous John Arbuckle from Garfield. I named my rival because he will be our competition to become the richest man alive. I replaced Squirtle with Meowth and proceeded to name him Garfield. That's a big brain nickname right there. We fight our rival for the first time and end up beating him pretty easily. Next, after delivering the parcel to Oak, I caught myself a Rattata and named him God. You'll see why later. After that, we fought all the trainers in Viridian Forest and challenged our rival. We have the move Bite now, which is going to be useful in the next gym, but for this battle, we're gonna stick to Scratch since we can get the stab boost from it. This battle isn't anything special, a couple of scratches and we take out both Pidgey and Bulbasaur. The time comes for our first gym battle with Brock. We don't have to worry about it too much since we have Bite and it does neutral damage against Brock's rock Pokemon. If we just had Scratch this gym battle, it would be a lot more difficult, but we have the power of God and anime on our side so we can't lose. Geodude gets taken out by 3 bites and Onyx is his last Pokemon, and we just bite it again. We get lucky since Onyx flinches from the first bite, but during the next turn he hits us with a rock tomb which lowers our speed. He switches to using tackle, thankfully since a rock tomb would bring us to low health and bring us into the range of being knocked out. But since he doesn't, we are able to take him out with 4 bites in total, giving us the first gym badge. Now let's see how much money we have so far. 5200 poke dollars. It's not that much yet since we haven't learned payday, so it's not going to be a huge amount anyway. We entered Mount Moon and during the battles in there we learned payday. Now we can finally start earning that cash money. We beat the guy at the end, and we have a choice between the fossils. I end up choosing the Amber Fossil. Yeah, that's right. Not what you expected, huh? We enter Cerulean City, and the first thing we do is go challenge the gym leader Misty. Before the battle, I gave Gurfield a rare candy that I found in the yard of one of those houses in the city. Misty leads off with Staryu, and I have Gurfield use Bite to try and get the flinch. We succeed in our first attempt. The next turn we try the same thing, but we aren't as lucky this time. Misty then decides to have Staryu use Recover. I switch to Payday since it does more damage and we will be able to get some more money from this battle. After a while, Staryu eventually goes down. Her last Pokemon is Starmie and I try to use the same strategy as the last battle. I don't get the flinch on my first try and Water Pulse does a lot of damage to us. And if we want to win, we'll have to get the flinch on our next turn. And what do you know? We do. Starmie flinches and we are able to finish it off next turn with another bite, giving us the second gym badge. Checking our money after the second gym battle, we currently have 15,501 poke dollars, which is over 10,000 more than the first gym badge. We are getting this money. Now it's time to face our rival. This battle was kind of difficult to do. His Pidgeotto, which he leads with, uses sand attack on us most of the time, and we begin to miss most of our moves later on in the battle and eventually lose. I try to bite it and avoid having my accuracy lowered, but it doesn't work this time, and we keep going. Rattata is next, and it usually does quite a bit of damage to us with a quick attack, but we are able to beat it this time without being hit. This is looking really good so far. Abra is out, and it's an easy knockout since it can't attack us back. His last Pokemon is Bulbasaur. I try to bite and flinch him to avoid being put to sleep, but it doesn't work. He goes for Sleep Powder, but luckily misses. I try it again, and we still don't get the flinch, but Bulbasaur misses Sleep Powder again, and at this point, God or someone must be watching over me, because Bulbasaur misses another Sleep Powder. That's three in a row. We had no business winning that battle, but I'm not complaining. I'm just happy we can move on. We head to Bill's place next. After we help him take off his Clefairy cosplay costume, he gives us the SSN ticket out of pure embarrassment. We face our rival once again, not too long after we beat him on Nugget Bridge, but it's now aboard the SSN. He leads with Pidgeotto again, and we almost take it out with two paydays, but he lives on a sliver of health. He hits back with Tackle, which does not do too much, and we easily take him out on the next turn. Next out is Raticate, and we hit it with a payday, which does a lot of damage, but he attacks back with Hyper Fang, which does a decent chunk to us as well. We are faster, however, and take it out before Raticate can do any more damage to us. His Abra evolved into a Kadabra during this time, but it still doesn't pose a threat as we are able to take it out with one payday. The final Pokemon we have to face is Ivysaur. 
we get really lucky again as Sleep Powder misses us and we do really good damage with Payday. It is almost a two hit KO with Payday but Ivysaur just barely lives and goes for Vine Whip taking us down to three health. We are able to outspeed and take it out with no real issue next turn. After that battle we go to the Seasick Captain and give him a free massage in exchange to teach us how to cut things. We take on Lieutenant Surge, also known as Little Toe Surge, and this battle went fairly smoothly. Voltorb is taken out by two paydays but not before it does a bit of damage to us with Shockwave, and Pikachu is taken out by just one payday. His last Pokemon Raichu wasn't as easy to take out though, our attack does about one third of his health and he decides to go for double team and raise his evasiveness. I switched to using Faint Attack because it can't miss, but it doesn't do nearly as much as payday. And to make things better, Raichu paralyzes us. Because of the paralysis, he outspeeds us and hits us hard with Shockwave, but luckily we are able to attack back and finish Raichu off with a final payday. Checking our money, after the battle, we have over 56,000 Poké Dollars. Our money is growing fast with all these paydays. After that, we went through Rock Tunnel, which is the worst part of the game. It felt like we were in there forever, but eventually we are out. The next thing we have to do is go clear out the rocket base under the game corner and face Giovanni. He sends out Onyx first and we hit him with a bite, which does decent damage. Onyx uses Rage on us, but it does very little, and on the next turn we manage to get a critical bite and take him out. Rhyhorn is out next and we take him out with no real trouble. We use Bite and it does one third of his total health and he misses with Fury Attack. We get a flinch on the next bite and take out Rhyhorn without him being able to hit us. Kangaskhan is the last Pokemon Giovanni has and this one gave me the most problems. From turn 1 we get hit with Fake Out and it takes us to almost half health. I didn't think Payday would be able to do enough damage, so I screech him. Payday still doesn't do that much damage and we're losing health fast. I try and switch to Bite to get a lucky flinch but it doesn't go our way, and it looks like we're gonna lose. I decide to put all my hope on a final Payday and we get a crit and win the battle. We had some insane luck so far in this challenge and I'm hoping this doesn't change. Alright, for the Erica battle, I'm gonna try something different. What if, instead of talking about the battle, I just sat here silently for the entire thing? I'm just gonna try it out. I don't even know if anyone is gonna get to this part of the video. So I'm just gonna do it anyway and see how it goes. So I'm just gonna sit here silently. It's time for yet another rival battle and I'm, I'm not gonna mention too much about this battle because there wasn't really anything special about it. The only thing I'm going to say is that he now has a Gyarados and Growlithe, which both have the ability Intimidate. This lowers our attack by one stage and is gonna make all future battles with our rival that much more difficult. We were still able to win this battle without too many problems but I can't say the same for the future ones. After beating our rival, we save Mr. Fuji and he gives you a recorder. It's just like 5th grade all over again. Now before we do anything else, I went ahead and caught 40 different kinds of Pokemon so I could get some health items for Gurfield. The items I got were the item finder, which helps locate some hidden items which otherwise you wouldn't be able to get, and with that I got the leftovers which will help us a lot in future harder battles. The other more important item I got was the amulet coin, to double our profit and get that cash money. Now this battle was the one that almost made me lose my sanity. This took me over 200 tries to beat and I was ready to quit YouTube and move to Fiji, but I stuck with it. This is perhaps the luckiest run I got, even his first two Pokemon were a problem. Pidgeot has the move Feather Dance, which lowers our attack by two stages. This is basically a run ender whenever it happens. This time we managed to get a crit and take Pidgeot out in one hit. Gyarados is next and lowers our attack with Intimidate. I go for Slashes here to possibly get a crit and manage to take him down to low health as he goes for Leer. I finish him with Payday and the next Pokemon out is Growlithe, which yet again lowers our attack with Intimidate. I go for Bite this time to try and get a flinch but it doesn't work out, but we get lucky as Growlithe does not attack us. We are able to take him out with Slash next turn. Alakazam is out next and I tried the same strategy as before and go for Bite but we don't get to flinch this time either. Alakazam decides to go for Calm Mind though and we take him out pretty easily with Slash. His last Pokemon is Venusaur and this was the hardest Pokemon to take down out of them all. He has Sleep Powder and if he ever decides to go for it, it's basically a GG. I got close so many times to taking this thing down but I always got put to sleep and taken out by Razor Leaf. I go for Screech to lower his defense so our attacks do more damage and he just goes for Sweet Scent which is the first time in all my attempts I've seen him do that. Slash does under half as Venusaur goes for Razor Leaf. We can still lose at any time if we are put to sleep so we have to be careful. We go for Slash again and he is left with a tiny amount of health as he goes for Poison Powder. This basically gives us the win on the next turn as we attack and finish him off. The Giovanni fight is next and compared to that last battle we had, this is really easy. It's not really interesting so I'm just gonna skip over it for your guys' sake. So you can thank me in the comments. We get the Master Ball which will be really important in this playthrough. The next gym battle is against Sabrina and this one is pretty uneventful. I'm gonna speed it up because basically we take her team down with only Payday and Bite. At least we can get some more money from this using Payday. And uh, I'm realizing now as the battle is going, I forgot to show you the money amount after the battle so uh, I'll make sure to do it in the next one. 
please forgive me. We trudge around in the safari and find some gold dentures and the HM for surf. The fight against the Hokage of the Kanto region is next and this could have been tough, but we're John Arbuckle, so we won with ease. First off is coughing and we get a crit with Slash and take it out. Easy work. Next is Muck and I use my big brain to choose the move Slash and get a crit once again. That's right. 1000 IQ plays. Koga has a great variety of Pokemon and sends out another coughing. Wow, a critical slash takes it out. Someone calculate the chances of getting 3 crits in a row. That's that's some pure skill right there. Weezing is the last Pokemon and we don't get a crit this time. I'm sad. Weezing uses sludge and does decent damage to us. Another slash takes it to red health and we get poisoned by toxic. Koga decides to start using hyper potions like a little bit <gasps> and the rest of the battle we keep attacking and at the end when things look bleak we get a final crit and take out Weezing. Not even close. Money check time. We're at 340,000 Poké Dollars. Not bad. Now it's time for God to shine. Have you ever seen a Rattata surf? Yeah, I, I didn't think so. Put some respect on Rattata's name. Now it's time for our battle against Blaine. He starts off with Growlithe, which lowers our attack. But even with that attack drop, we managed to take it down with one slash. The crit didn't make a difference. I've done this battle a bunch of times and a non-critical slash takes it down. Next out is Ponyta and I try and bite to get that flinch, but it doesn't work out. And my little pony hits back with a fire blast. It does a lot of damage, but we are able to take it down with another slash next turn. Big Horse is his next Pokemon, and the strategy works out this time. We get the flinch with the first bite, but we aren't as lucky on the second one. Rapidash does a ton of damage with Fire Blast and takes us into yellow health, and surprise surprise, a slash takes it down. Who would have seen that coming? Blaine's last Pokemon is Arcanine, which lowers our attack yet again. This means we will have to get a crit in order to win, because by the time we try and screech Arcanine, we're taken out by Fire Blast. I start off with Bite because I didn't think a critical slash would even take it out. We get the flinch and on the next turn we risk it all and we manage to get the crit. This takes down Arcanine and wins the battle. This took me quite a while to do but we can finally move on to the next gym. Upon leaving the gym we see Bill and he wants us to sail the 7 seas with him. But I reject the poor man and let him sit alone in the Poké Center forever. Giovanni battle time. I thought this one would be really difficult but it turned out to be pretty simple. Not gonna lie, secondary effects are the key to my strategy, just like literally all the other important battles. Rhyhorn is out first and we don't get to flinch with bite and just two shot it while it lowers my speed with scary face. Nidoqueen is next out. We get pretty lucky and crit slash takes it out. We do get poison but it's not too bad. Similar thing to Nidoking, a critical slash ends his existence. Dugtrio was the next Pokemon to have its life ended. One non-critical slash is all it takes to take it out. He has another Rhyhorn as his last Pokemon and like I said, secondary effects are the key. One bite takes it to yellow health and we get to flinch. With that, the battle is won and we have all 8 badges. Quick money update, we are currently at 437,000 Poké Dollars. Next update will be before the Elite Four, so let's just get to it. After the Giovanni fight, we have a yet another rival battle. He has a full team of 6 now and I thought this battle would be really difficult for us, but it wasn't so bad. Pidgeot is down in 2 slashes, but not before he gets in a wing attack. Next out is Rhyhorn and 2 bites takes it down. Or ironically, because that's what he tried to do to us but he missed. Gyarados is the first problem Pokemon for us. I have to screech it to get his defense down, and after having my attack lowered, Slash does over half and instead of attacking us, Gyarados goes for Rain Dance. We take it out with another Slash in the next turn. The other problem for us is Growlithe, who also lowers our attack, but even with that, Slash does over half and lets us two shot Growlithe. Alakazam doesn't do much of anything and we take it out pretty easily. His final Pokemon is Venusaur and we start again with a Screech and we get hit with a Sweet Sam, which lowers our evasiveness. Slash still doesn't do much damage and I was getting worried since Venusaur started setting up with growth. We keep hitting with Slash and Venusaur restores its health with Synthesis. We have no other choice but to keep going for Slash and Venusaur hits us back with a Razor Leaf which takes us into yellow health, which in turn allows Gurfield to take him out next turn. Now after that battle we can move on to Victory Road. After getting through Victory Road we make it to the Pokemon League but we are nowhere near to take on the Elite Four. We need to grind. After some grinding and using the last of our rare candies, we are now at level 87. Here are Gurfield's stats and our moveset before we take on the Elite Four. This is how much money we have as well. We take on the first Elite Four member, Lorelei. Dugong is out first and we take it out with two slashes, but not before we get hit by Surf. Cloyster is the next Pokemon she has and I switch to using Bite since it's special in this gen and Cloyster is very physically defensive. Two Bites is all it takes to take it out. Similar deal with Slowbro. One bite and one slash take it out pretty easily. Her next Pokemon is Lapras and we keep using Slash to deal as much damage as we can. But when Lapras gets to low health, Lorelei uses a full restore. Another slash and a lucky flinch with a bite allows us to finish it off with a final attack. Jinx is the final Pokemon we have to take out. One bite and slash take it out. We get pretty lucky since she misses the lucky kiss which would have probably ended the battle for us. Bruno is the second Elite Four member and we need quite a bit of luck for this one. He has a lot of fighting types and we usually get taken out with one stab fighting move since we have such low defense. Onyx is pretty simple to take out, 2 bites is enough to take it down. Hitmonchan is a problem, but luckily we get a flinch with a bite and then a crit slash to take it down. 
Hitmonlee is a one shot with Slash so it doesn't pose much of a threat. His ace Machamp is also taken out with some serious luck. We use Slash and Machamp hits back with a cross chop which would have easily taken us out but he misses. We then get a crit with our second Slash and take down Machamp. Bruno's last Pokemon is an Onix which is also taken out with two bites, winning us the battle and allowing us to continue on with the Elite Four. The old woman here is Agatha, and since she uses Ghost-type Pokemon, we only have one move to use against them, Bite. Gengar is first up and two bites take care of him. Golbat is the first non-Ghost-type Pokemon she has and, well technically, all her Pokemon are Poison-type, so should she be the Poison-type Elite Four member? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Anyways, Golbat is eventually taken out, as is Arbok, with a couple of bites and slashes. After that, she sends out another Gengar, which yet again is taken out with two bites. But we get lucky as Gengar misses Hypnosis, which would have made the battle much more difficult. She doesn't have much of a variety of Pokemon, as Haunter is her last Pokemon. We get stalled for a bit since we are put to sleep this time, and she heals with the Dream Eater and a full restore. But eventually we are able to win just by biting. Before our battle with Lance, I needed to change our moveset around a bit since I was running out of power points on our previous moves and I had no ethers or elixirs. I also had to resort to using the double team strategy for this battle, otherwise it would have taken forever. I only use it for this battle so don't worry about the champion battle. That one I do normally. Lance starts off with Gyarados and one shockwave almost takes it out. Lance is forced to heal and I take this time to set up with 6 double teams. After all 6 are up, a shockwave and a return takes down Gyarados. Aerodactyl is taken down by 2 shockwaves after it misses scary face which wouldn't have made a difference even if it did hit. His ace Dragonite is the next one out and we get a lucky crit with a return, one shotting it. This is a real game changer for this battle. His last 2 Pokemon are Dragonair and they don't put up too much of a challenge. With some returns and stalling from Lance, with healing items we eventually are able to take them both out winning us the battle and a allowing us to take on the final trainer of the game, our rival. The champion is and we are prepared to take his team on. I switch my move set up again, learning Water Pulse and Dig instead of Screech and Double Team. With those changes, we are ready. Our rival sends out Pidgeot first, we hit it hard and are able to beat it with two shockwaves, but it hits us with sand attack, lowering our accuracy. This is going to make the rest of the battle more annoying. Alakazam is out and is one shot by return, and Rhydon is also taken out by one water pulse. Gyarados is out next, and just like the Lance battle, it takes two shockwaves to take this thing down. Arcanine is out and it could have done massive damage with a flamethrower, but luckily for us it gets confused by water pulse and it hits itself. This lets us take it down with another water pulse. His last Pokemon is Venusaur, and we got stalled heavily with this one. The battle was really boring since whenever he decided to charge up with Solar Beam, I decided to use Dig to avoid the attack and deal damage to him, but since our attack was cut down, it basically did nothing. In the meantime, Venusaur used Synthesis to heal up and it made the battle take forever. Eventually Venusaur ran out of Solar Beams and had no other attacking moves, so we had to keep dealing damage in between the healing. After a long time, we take out Venusaur and win the battle, becoming the champion. We get our names recorded in the Hall of Fame and John Arbuckle and Garfield become legends. But this is not the end. After the Elite Four, we are currently at 831,000 Poké Dollars, which sounds like a large amount, but we are still unable to purchase a bike. So can I really say that we completed the challenge? Uh, it's hard to say. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below and subscribe for more content in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.